Hello there, I've picked myself up an Amstrad CPC, one of my eBay impulse purchases. I think I paid 30 something pounds for it in untested condition. Now, the guy I bought it from, he advertised it as it was working three years ago when he last tried it, which can mean just about anything, can't it? So it doesn't guarantee it's working condition now. So I've been waiting on a power supply and a SCART lead to test it. That's now turned up. And I've been resisting the temptation to power this thing up simply because when it arrived, it was actually damp. So I don't know if it's been stored damp or whether it happened when it was in transit, I don't know. But to avoid any possible damage, I don't want to simply just put power to it and hope for the best. I think the safest thing to do is to go inside it, check for any signs of corrosion, if necessary, clean that up, and then we can risk powering it on. So I'm going to play it safe, I think. So I, I have had a little look inside it, and it was quite grubby inside. So I think take the motherboard out, clean it up, make sure all the pins in the sockets are making good contact. That'll be my first job. And the overall condition of this thing is really nice. There's no marks or scratches on it. It's a little bit dirty, but it's not too bad. I've seen considerably worse. Just wants a bit of a clean. One thing I have noticed is the tape counter won't reset. Button seems jammed, but the counter itself is running, so ah, it's not the end of the world if that doesn't work correctly, but it'd be nice to see if I can fix it. So yeah, let's crack it open and take a look inside. Okay, quite a sparse looking motherboard. And only one electrolytic capacitor. That's actually quite nice. Right, take it out of the case. I'm going to re-socket some of these chips. Give it a clean. And then maybe we can apply some power to it. And there we have it, all its glory. Well, those connectors don't look too clever. Uh, it definitely needs a clean. Very neatly laid out. One thing I noticed when I was taking it apart, this bottom middle screw here and the one at the end, those screws are different to all the others that hold the board in place, they're shorter. So I don't know if that's consistent throughout all of the range, but on this that was the case. So if you have one of these, just bear that in mind when you put it back together. Right, I think I'm going to pull the Z80. I assume that's the wrong there, socketed. I'll pull those out and clean the connectors. And I'll give the whole board a bit of an IPA bath. And I might as well change that capacitor while I'm here as well. Right, I'll go ahead and get this capacitor changed.
Right, it's clean up time. Let's get the debris off with a, a dry brush first. Though everything seems to be fairly well stuck to the board. Let's give it a soak. that dry. The board's been cleaned and dried, the capacitor's been changed, my chips have been re-socketed, so I'm going to temporarily put it back into the main case and I'll see if it actually fires up. I'll do that now. Okay, when I said that these two screws were slightly shorter. It's actually all three on the bottom because I wasn't paying attention. So originally these things came with um, a monitor and that monitor had a built-in power supply. Now I don't have a monitor so some very clever person who's selling these kits on eBay. So we've got the SCART adapter and a 5 volt switch and power supply and it wasn't expensive so this should allow me to hook this up to a, a standard TV. So let's give it a whirl. And this is literally the first time I've tried to power this thing on. I have no idea if it works, but fingers crossed. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Keyboard seems responsive. Tape deck seems to run, although it's making a noise, but that's fine. I've got um, I've got to clean that out yet and replace the belt, so that's absolutely fine. I'm absolutely over the moon with that. Wonderful. That is a result I'm very happy with. But I've still got more work to do. I do want to take the keyboard apart and clean it out. I've got a new drive belt for the tape mechanism, so I want to take that out and clean it as well and re-lubricate it. Also on the volume control, you may or may not hear it on the camera, I'll try and get in close. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of crackling and static on the volume control, so I'll give that a clean out with some contact cleaner as well and hopefully that will resolve it. But yeah, so far so good. I want to spend some time on the case now and clean it out, clean out the keyboard, service the tape deck. So I'm going to start stripping the parts out of the top half of the case. So I've never done one of these before, so I'm not entirely sure how everything goes. So I'm going to take my time. Let's just undo that loom. Keyboard.
Well, that was an ordeal. Right. I think my next job is going to be to wash the case parts and while they're drying I can work on the tape deck. Right then, what have we got here with the tape deck? Ooh. Absolute whole raft of capacitors on there. I don't know whether to swap them out or leave them. Really not sure. Um, hmm. It's probably not as critical in a cassette deck as it is in a computer. I can't imagine they get a very hard life, it's just part of the amplifier. But, nah, I should probably change them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve of them. Wonderful. Yeah, I better do it. Also got a new belt, so that can go on as well. Clean the heads while I'm here. Have a look at that counter as well and find out why that's not resetting. Let's see, I'm gonna give myself some working room. Um, possibly take that. That's better. Access everything properly now. Right, start with the belt. Doesn't feel particularly taut. So I'm thinking, let me take this off. Before I unscrew that, let's just see what's on the other side in case it's holding anything in. Should be okay. It's a little bit smaller, but it's probably just not stretched, so that's probably fine. That screw doesn't seem to tighten. Maybe that's just the way it is, or... I don't know. Make sure there are no twists in the belt. I think we're okay. And that's got a bit more tension in it than the, the original. Hmm. Bottom side seems pretty clean, so I'm not too worried about any dirt there. There doesn't seem to be any. I'm going to get an eye loop and I'm just going to have a look at the values of these capacitors and see if I've got them. And if I have, I might as well change them. Yeah, for the sake of future reliability, I'll just go ahead and change these caps. Now, I've got them all apart from this one, which is a 47 microfarad 50 volt. I've got a 47 microfarad 60 volt, it's quite a bit bigger, so I'm going to try it and hopefully it won't foul anything in the mechanism, I mean electrically it should be fine but 
If not, I can always put the original one back in for now and, and order a replacement, but well, let's get going. Now that vial job's done, I'll take a look at the reset for the tape counter. So I'll start by taking it off. Now, when I took it out of the case, the actual reset button just fell out. So it might actually have snapped. So there might not be much I can do with it, but let's have a look. Hmm. Might have to do this off camera under an eye loop. I'll um I'll let you know. Oh yeah, it's snapped. So I'm gonna need a new tape counter. I'm not gonna worry too much about it, it's not something I would tend to use anyway, but it'd be nice to have it all working, so I'll I'll keep my eye out. So looking at the tape deck itself, I was gonna clean this out but it's actually not that dirty it's actually very clean so I think I'll get away with just cleaning the heads and that should be all it needs I had a little bit of corrosion in places but nothing major and it's not dirty in the slightest which is very unusual so I've just got a dry cloth and just a bit of alcohol And that'll do. Put it back in the case, I suppose. Oh, actually, one thing I want to do first. Try and clean up the uh, volume control. So, douse that. Work it backwards and forwards, bit of contact cleaner. I've reinstalled the cassette mechanism back into the case and it turns out I'm an idiot. So earlier on I said I was changing the capacitors on this and I had a 47 microfarad at 50 volts. No I don't. Absolutely not. What I do if I have a service manual for a computer and I do for this one is I will go through and I'll just recheck any capacitor values that I've changed against that service manual and just make sure there's no discrepancies. And that one that I thought was 47 microfarads was actually listed as 0.33. So there's a big discrepancy straight away. So looking again at the original capacitor, I'd completely misread the label. It was 0.47 microfarads. So that was stupid of me, but this is why it pays to check. And if you've got a service manual and you're doing something like this, I would say do what well don't do what i do and make a mistake but do what i do and recheck your work afterwards um certainly before you put power to anything it might just save you a lot of grief later but anyway it's done all the capacitors have been changed so i can move on i want to spend a bit of time on the keyboard now uh, it seems to work absolutely fine i just want to take it apart clean the keys clean all the gunk from between the keys so i'll do that now now, never done this before, so I'm looking at it and I'm seeing these little plastic clips. So I'm assuming if I just disengage those, it'll come apart, but we'll see. Gently does it. Wonderful. That's all I'm sorry. 
keyboard membrane. Very thin. A nice nick, but just needs a little bit of a clean. One side. Right, keys themselves. Oh, and everything sits on a little spring. So I just need to be careful I don't lose anything. So how do these keys pop out? I've got a key puller, but I'm not sure if that's the best method for this. I don't want to break any plastic tabs. So I'm thinking, yeah, I just push the tabs in gently. Key pops right out. No danger of breaking anything. So, let's have a couple of containers. Start removing keys. Now, the keys, if you can see it, have a little hook there and one on the other side, and that's what holds it into the case. So it probably would have been absolutely fine to use a key puller, but old brittle plastic, I thought just gently moving that hook to one side and pushing the key through from the back of the case was the safest way to do it. That way I'm, well, I'm reducing the risk of actually breaking something so that's what I did it seemed to work pretty well right I'll go and wash everything now all the keyboard parts have now been cleaned so I'm going to make a start on reassembly so right let's start with the space bar so some of these keys had these little bars just to support the larger keys so I'll start with those so space bar had two springs. Um, let's make sure I get this the right way round. It does matter. Nope. Probably that way. Every video, it's the space bar that gives me grief. There we go. Lovely. So, now I've got to put the, the bar back in. Should. Oh, easy peasy. We'll clip in one piece like that. So the enter key was the same, but with a smaller bar. So if I install the key first, Right, best way if I push down here on the board, and this should just snap backwards. He says, Yeah. Nothing too difficult there. And shift keys, I think. Next. Which that isn't. Yeah, there's one. And there's the other. Of 
course it helps to put the spring in if you're not an idiot like me you'd have probably tweaked to that before you put the key on but there you go <laughs> not a professional just a hobbyist down line the bar up and just snap it backwards I'll try and do this with one hand while holding the camera so I can show you in a bit more detail down and snap that in so now I don't need access to the underneath of the keyboard anymore to fit these bars I'm going to go ahead and put the membrane back in and this is very fragile And the top case, not the top case, the bottom metal piece. So let's orientate this right. I do believe like that. And it should be a case of just popping these little clips back in. Right, I shall make a start on putting the rest of the keys on. starting to come together right we're all back together I suppose there's nothing else to do but test it all still works yep Okay, try a game. I've got a bag of games for this thing. So, what I have picked is something I'm familiar with. Hey, 
Manic Miner, why not? So, is it control small enter? Play and any key. Well, the tape deck's running, so that's a good sign. Now, if this was a Spectrum, and don't get me wrong, I love the Spectrum. I think it's an amazing machine. But games never worked first time. So there's the advantage of a built-in, purpose-built cassette deck. This thing's fantastic. 30-odd-year-old computer with 30-odd-year-old media. First go. Well, there you have it. One fully functioning Amstrad CPC. Now, I never had one of these when I was a kid, and I don't know anyone who did. So I didn't know what to expect. And Amstrad to me always meant cheap stereos of dubious quality. So I really wasn't sure what to expect with this, but I'm absolutely blown away with the quality of it. And the way it works is absolutely phenomenal. Just a word of caution with it though, when it is in its constituent parts, it is a little bit flimsy. The motherboard's very thin, that keyboard membrane is extremely fragile. So if you are going to take these things apart, just treat it with a little bit of respect. Having said that, when it's together, it's absolutely rock solid and it feels really well made. It's really heavy. So I think if I ever get burgled, this would make a really good blunt instrument, really good home defense. And I think if I whacked somebody over the head with this, it would actually survive as well. So if ever I get broken into, this is the first thing I'm grabbing. And I love the size of it as well. It's absolutely enormous. Um, just to put this into some sort of perspective. There's a spectrum. There's a bigger spectrum. Absolutely dwarfed by it. And there's a QL, and I always thought of the QL as being a really long computer, but no, this is bigger. Phenomenal thing. Really impressed with it. Anyway, I'll wrap this up. Um, thank you very much.